Curling now enters the Sports Weekend Spotlight. Hi again, curling fans. Hello, Colleen. Hello, Laura. We're going to get Hello. right. Hello. Did you guys ever get to restart a curling game? It's like we get to restart. We get to do it all over. <laughs> I wish. Yeah, I wish. Uh, Call, how are you? Can you hear me? You're in the middle of a curling club. I don't know if Colleen can hear me. Call, are you there? I don't think she can hear me. Laura, you can hear me? I'm here. Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> we have some technical difficulties, so let's get right into it. Wonderful to see you again. Um, like like we were saying, um, you're here, there, everywhere. You were just in Saskatoon. Now you're in Halifax. How do you keep it all together? We use a Google Calendar. That's how we keep it all together. Jeff and I, uh, it's a lot of organizing, um, but we have some good people to help us out. And uh, Jeff is is awesome right, right now at home with both of the boys. So uh, between the two of us, we make it work. It's a lot sometimes, but uh, I'm really grateful that I can do it all. There's a lot to juggle, no doubt. Of course, we know that you and Kirk are the mixed double specialists now, but you're back in the four-person game um, with Team Laws. And I incorrectly stated that you were going to be skipping. You're not. You're playing third. So Selena is skipping. Uh, mm -hmm. You're on the ice. What's it like to be back uh, with the team and, and with these ladies? It's a lot of fun. And I think anyone who knows these girls knows uh, the kind of people that they are. They um are are the best of the best they're just great humans and also great curlers so it's really fun to be here with them i feel grateful that it's with this group of people that i get to kind of stay in it a little bit and it's been a lot of fun sweeping um being around the women's game uh again i'm, I'm really enjoying it and I'm, I'm happy to be here with them and of course for for everybody joining call can you hear us welcome i do hear you yeah there was some gremlins <laughs> no um, kidding go ahead laura with your new baby now uh, and I, your mom and dad were so wonderfully taking care of uh, the baby in, uh, where were we? Outside of Ottawa. How is that for you? Uh, juggling now two lovely little babies and trying to juggle all the curling too. Yeah, I've, I've had uh, Weston, our youngest, with me for most of the events so far this year. And uh, that's another good thing about mixed doubles. The games are pretty short, so I'm not away from him for too long. And um, my parents have helped. We've had uh, Jeff's parents help us out a lot. Kirk's parents played grandma and grandpa for me this past weekend. Uh, had a couple of nice ladies from the Carlton Place Curling Club take over for a game when we didn't have anyone to watch him. So um, it really does take a village, as they say. But uh, Kirk's been a really supportive partner um, in that sense, always offering to help, understanding um, that, you know, babies don't have a schedule and, and that sort of thing. So he's been awesome. And um, it's it's been fun. That sounds like a big juggle. Uh, Laura, you guys have had a lot of success. You played in in the Super Series Finals uh, both times. You're knocking on the door to to win that title. Um, what what makes you and Kirk such a such a good team? Because of course I, I remember that national title you won. You guys have been so strong for so many years. What do you think it is about you two that makes you uh, such a great? Team? Uh, I think there's there's a definitely a level of mutual respect that the two of us have for each other, and um, we really trust each other out there on the ice, and we're able, um, you know, to help each other in a way that I don't know a lot of mixed doubles teams are able to do. That we really communicate to each other what we need. Um, he he really puts a lot of faith in me, which I think gives me a lot of confidence mm -hmm. out there to kind of do my thing, which is nice to have. And we've been working really hard. I think that's kind of the, the key. We've had a few training camps. We're open to everything that's been offered to us. We're not afraid to try new things right now. And we're just putting it all um, actually out there onto the ice. All of the work that we've put in, we're seeing the results of, and that just makes us more excited to even work that much harder. Nice. So awesome. Who do you play tomorrow? It's two cells. We play, I don't know. Who lost that so, game out there, Colleen? Uh, uh, um, which one do you need? Will you play Kelly. the loser of Bert and Kelly? They're still playing. Yeah. You got all the then way. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, hmm. wow, somebody made a nice cleanup shot because it was a mess there. For you can see right there, nothing in the I, house, and it's tied coming home. It. Oh, it's extra end. Extra yeah. end. I always forget they're, they're throwing the extra ends back in the same direction. It's confusing. I, I just want to jump in, Laura. I want to ask about the decision to go exclusively to, to mixed doubles because it, you know a lot of people were talking about it. We've talked on this show a lot about the evolution of mixed doubles. How has that been? And do you think we're going to see more of this? Do you think it's been paying off in the sense, in, in the way you 
hoped it would in, in this discipline. It's obviously very early, but so far I feel like it's it's been paying off in that way. Um, we've seen the results that we want to see, but not only that, we kind of have this like excitement for the game. We're excited to be able to put in that kind of time and effort that we weren't able to put in before. And I do think that, especially as things like the Super Series, the CBC Super Series starts to grow, that will give more opportunity for teams to make this their main focus and um, be able to offer things to their sponsors, uh, a little more exposure, just the game will grow from things like this. And I think that that's going to be key. And as these get off the ground and more events like this come into play, then you will see more teams start to uh, just focus their time exclusively to mixed doubles. I think uh, we took a leap of faith before we really knew how, you know, how it was going to go. And uh, we're, I don't think either of us have any regrets. Nice. Awesome. Well, good of you to join us. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Always good to see you, Laura. Take care. You too. Okay. Yeah. Bye -bye. I'm aware of the time because I have a clock right beside me. And also we've got to get to Prince Albert, don't we? Saskatchewan we before do. Felix and Lori have to get on the ice for their practice. Well, you they're know, the yeah, you know what I've said about Saskatchewan. All good things go through Saskatchewan. They're in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, where I have a lot of family, of course, playing in the mixed national championship. And if you look at the top of the standings, yeah. You're going to see Quebec. Quebec is on top. All and, alone. Yeah. And then there's that log jam there for uh, second place with two losses. The team they played tonight is Nova Scotia's Paul Fleming. And they're in that other log jam for th uh, with three losses. And really, you kind of have to stay at three losses. Um, you don't want to drop to four, or you might not make the playoffs. Never want to drop to four. But let's go to beautiful Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. And here they are, Lori and Felix. Look at you two in in the number one spot, making it look so easy. How are you guys? Great to see you. Yeah, good to see you. I'm 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 really good. A little tired, but it's not all nationals. But <laughs> try to rest a little bit. And I know you guys have a game coming up in what in forty minutes. So you have to be on the ice in ten minutes for practice. So we'll keep this quick. Felix, what's the magic that's going on for Quebec uh, this week? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, it's been going uh, well a couple of years, obviously, for us, uh, for the province. We've had a couple of different winners, but um, personally, I think I'm playing, I mean, with uh, people I know very well and that I've practiced with a lot and we're gelling well on the ice right now and showing that uh, we've, we've been a team for a long time. To that point, um, we're talking about chemistry all the time. Specifically, we just had Laura, and she talked about the chemistry between Kirk and her. In the mixed game, uh, is that also a key part of this when you're at a national championship, Lori? Um, definitely. I like it's. I feel like it's totally different because, like, two men's and two two women's, like the chemistry is not the same, and the communication is not the same. We had a talk actually this week um on team dynamics and we had a pretty hard game at one point uh, against yukon um so then we had a talk after that and now we kind of regrouped and we know um exactly what like each and everyone needs so that's really great and i know emily so well and i know felix so well and <laughs> emil too so um i feel it's really important to just uh, talk a lot and uh, stay focused and have fun, especially have fun. We Felix, know I know oh. Quebec has won a couple of these uh, for the last couple of years, and then you've got that mixed double series in Quebec that the Desjardins are organized. What is it about mixed play that seems to be so especially strong in Quebec? I think it starts that it's fairly available currently for everybody. Um, Habay is doing, doing a really good job at running several events all throughout the province that are sort of at, attracting both the, the elite teams and the more participation teams. So everybody finds what they're looking for in those mixed events. And it's the competition out here is like quite strong, but it's really, it's, it's quite open. It's quite, um, if everybody feels like they have a chance. And I think this is what makes this event great. Well, that, I was going to ask you guys, what is the vibe around the championship, around the rink, around Prince Albert? Uh, maybe, Lori, if you can give a little bit of insight of what's it been like to be there. I think PA is a great curling community, but what's it been like to, to be there and be in this championship? 
Well, it's actually the second time I've been here because I was here at the 2019 Canadian Junior. So I kind of know the curling club and everything. And it's so nice because there are some people who was cheering for us and uh, who actually uh, took care of my dad because he had in 2019 like his um, like a surgery to his eye during the uh, Canadian championship. So then now we can see those people, uh, they're all coming cheering for us. So that's really nice. People here are amazing. Uh, the curling club is beautiful. It's big. It's nice to play on uh, a great surface also. It's a little cold, <laughs> honestly. Uh, we left Montreal and it was like 20 degrees uh, outside and now it's like minus 20. So it's a big difference. Um, but the ambience is so nice, and uh, especially with the teams here, um, you know, it's the first time I've seen a uh, um, Koei here, uh, Jamie Koei. <laughs> so it's pretty special for me because, like, I can meet new people um, on like every mixed Canadian. So it's really nice. The awesome. legendary Koei family, and just quickly because I know you've got yeah. practice. Um, what has to happen now for you to make playoffs? Just keep winning. Yeah, obviously, the winning formula is, is, is easy, but at the same time, what needs to happen for that to happen is to just stay tight, I think, and to, to, we're, we're, we're putting pressure right now on our opponents, and I think we need to keep that going, but we need, you know, we need to find that rhythm of, of good aggression on the opponents, which we've been doing well, and uh, just keep, obviously, yeah, keep playing well, but keep, keep, keep it keep the spirits up out there and uh, just, you know, a couple more wins and we'll be in the playoffs. So that's what we're getting for right now. All well, right. I can, I can, I can tell you're ready to get on the ice. Yeah. Go, um, go in. Good luck against Nova Scotia, but not too much luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the night. Yeah. We get, we get Paul, Paul's always to play again. It's great it's to see tough. you. Good luck to the team the rest of the way and always great to talk to you. Thank you. Guys. Thank you so much guys. Okay. Take care. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Uh, I, hope I, I hope I haven't delayed their pride. We haven't delayed their pride. Well, I know I, I always worry about that. I know I could see Felix uh, looking rather intense, uh, get, wanting to get on the ice. And of course, we know Lori, um, so charismatic, so entertaining, so fun. Um, and, and call, remember when she really burst onto the scene at the Scotty, she sort of captured the hearts and minds of Canadians with her bubbly personality. And I think you see it there, a good, a good mix on that team, no doubt. Yeah, well, I've said it before. I mean, the, the, what I love about Quebec teams is they play with such passion all the time. And there's no sort of robotic way of performing on the ice. They're, they're just all in. And we've seen it through the years, whether it was with Pierre Charette or Guy Hemmings, of course, and uh, Marie-France LaRouche. They just always had this, um, the joy of playing. Um, I love it. And we see it with Laurie and we see it with Felix, for sure. No kidding. Uh, let's keep it going, of course, in the house. We always want fans on this show. And uh, Stephanie Carlton reached out to us, a great curling fan, and Call, a great athlete, an eight-time Special Olympics gold medalist uh, in baseball and in bowling. Lovely. In the house on that curling show tonight, joining us here. Stephanie, and there you are. It's wonderful to see you. How are you? Welcome to the show. Thanks. I'm good. How are you guys? We're good Great. too. Do you curl as well with all the list of uh, sports that you do? Are you a curler as well? Yes, I am. I've been curling with Sephora Curling Club for 15 years. Wow. What position do you play? It's all over the place. I usually play lead. Okay. Nice. So you uh, change it up. I like that. Stephanie, I know I know you're a big fan of Colleen, so I know this is a big moment. I'm a big fan of Colleen as well. Um, <laughs> but you're also a great Special Olympian, uh, and you have you've won eight gold medals. Do you have the medals? Can you show them off? And can you tell us about the bowling and the baseball? I have these ones. Oh, that's awesome. In Perkins Field, silver we won in Birch Falls, and then the bronze I won in a, another hometown game. 
Oh, that's so good. That's so good. That. And and here's some pictures. Maybe you can tell us about these photos and, and what you've been doing and, and where you've been playing over the years. This one was taken in Berks Falls after one of our silver medal wins in Berks Falls for our hometown games. Nice. And um, so right now, baseball is over, but are you playing, um, are you back on the ice? Yes, for curling. For curling? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. And what's the name of your curling yes. club, by the way? The South River Curling Club. Where's that at? It's in Ontario? In Toronto, or? Right? So it's I'm in Halifax. Okay, great. Well, listen, I, so you, and, and who's your favorite curler right now? Who do you think is going to win the Briar and Scotties this year? Uh, hmm. <laughs> to it. Um, probably Brad Gucci. Okay, good guess for the men. Good guess. I like that. And for the women? Probably Caitlin Laws. Okay. After she has her baby, I like. Well, we're gonna we'll, we'll bring you in if, if your predictions are right. We'll have you back on the show. Alrighty. Cool. Okay. Right. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us, Stephanie. Keep up Bye. the great stuff. And I know you'll be tweeting at us and letting us know how everything's going up in Northern Ontario. Great to see you. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Eight time uh, uh, Special Olympics gold medalist nice. bowling and baseball. Paul. Um, That's so good. Always looking for fans to join us in the house. So let us know. Uh, Call, uh, like you said, you're in a curling club. You're at the mm -hmm. curling club for the uh, Stu Cells. Yeah. Um, maybe we can bring up some of that Biz Again self and talk about this event a little bit because you yeah. are out there on the ice catching some of the sights and stuff. A lot of big names uh, in the curling world, uh, they're competing this week, Call. Well, Stu Cells is an amazing addition for uh, teams in Eastern Canada. And this year, we're lucky enough that Ontario's John Epping came, uh, Daniel Inglis from Ontario, Caitlin Laws, mine is Caitlin, there's Suzanne Burke, still out on the ice, by the way, playing Andrea Kelly in an all-maritime matchup in an extra end, and she just made a lovely shot. Suzanne's going to have a hard shot to try to win that. Um, and then Owen Purcell, he is the Canadian junior champ. Nathan Young, you can kind of see him in the side there from Newfoundland and Labrador. Yeah. And uh, uh, this is part of Caitlin Law's team. But Caitlin, of course, um, stayed home back in Manitoba because she's about, maybe not tonight or tomorrow or next week, but she's ready to uh, give birth to her first child. You're, you're hoping she has a baby December 16th because I am. What a blessed day that is. Caitlin Law is born December 16th. You were born December 16th. Johnny Morris born December 16th. Good birthday, Something's isn't it? Something's in the water. Something's in the water. Well, the stars are aligned there. But anyhow, Daniel Inglis won that game tonight. And um, Nathan Young, Nathan Young from Newfoundland, um, they were able to win their game against Stuart Thompson, so they're looking good. So, can you, can you keep your eye on what's going on in that extra end? I know you're dying to know. This is the last shot coming up right now. So, what and if Bert has hammer extra end, Andrea Kelly in the position to steal the game right now? Yeah, yeah. And uh, Bert is playing the wide her out turn because she's a lefty, um, draw for the win. So, she's going wide here. She has to bite a beat a bit of the forefoot um and they're still playing without marie christensen who is uh i played for them in moncton marie was writing her osteopath exams and now uh marie is playing third for paul fleming up in prince albert that's right so i know so here I, comes I, it it looks play by play this is mm, she's heavy on that yeah, she's oh heavy. my it, you know what it just it never caught the curl she missed it only by about uh, mm, three inches. She's so three it's, inches heavy. It's, it's a stolen victory and an extra end for Andrea Kelly. Yeah. Uh, Suzanne Burt now will end up playing uh, Walker Cry. Laura Walker. Well, yeah, Walker. 
we call her Walker Crocker, uh, right. we'll, we'll end up playing the uh, team Moz in that game. And I guess if yeah. that would mean that Andrea Kelly and Danielle English, I guess, if they're both. The we'll play in the A final. Yeah. We'll play in the A and uh, English's team looked really good. And they've, they've had a busy season already. Five. Um, they've played in five events so far, which, which makes it pretty busy. But the important thing about a big event like this with the Stu Cells is it because of the uh, point system and because they're able to uh, bring a lot of teams in from away, it raises the value of the points because of the field, depth, of, depth of field. So it's really important uh, for an event like this with good prize money uh, on great ice uh, to advance all of the teams from the Atlantic provinces. So... Um, and have the teams come from other places too. Uh, it is a busy curling calendar. We don't have to tell you that, curling fans. Uh, curling every weekend, all you can eat, uh, granite buffet. Um, and of course, the mixed double super series rolls on. And this is the upcoming one the Service Experts Mixed Double Super Series Shootout in Leduc, Alberta. November 17th to the 20th, and you see the picture of Laura, if I'm not mistaken, that is where Laura won All right. the championship. Interesting. So a lucky town for them. A lucky I played town. in Leduc. It's a good curling town. It is. And Great we'll, ha nice we'll have that on CBC Gem and CBC Sports.ca uh, next weekend. Lovely. Is that next weekend already? I, I, I like need <laughs> Laura's Google Calendar. That's you, what I need. You heard me pause because I had to go, yeah, that Think is about a, it. Yeah. Uh, weekend. Um, and, of course, we should mention quickly, you're coming to Toronto tomorrow. We'll be at the Toronto Hope Bondspiel on Saturday. A great event. I can't wait to see you. I can't wait to see you, too, because uh, we're going to be apparently dancing at night. Well, I was practicing. <laughs> So was that what that was? I'm not oh, that bad. bad. Yeah, exactly. I'm not that bad, bad a dancer. Uh, listen, I'm really excited about our next guest, John Thurston, a wheelchair curler for Canada. He was at the Paralympics in Beijing. We spent a lot of time together because I was at the Ice Cube uh, right after you left. I had a lot of awesome conversations with John. Yeah. Here's some of that, and then we'll bring John onto the show. Who's watching back home? Who do you want to give a shout out to uh, on that curl? Oh, there's so many. But my family. I mean, uh, it was pretty cool. My sister sent me some pictures of uh, a watch party at, at uh, her place. So they stayed up uh, all last night watching our games. And, uh, you know, I want to shout out to my mom and stepdad, uh, my dad. Um, I don't know, just fa friends, uh, all my friends that are watching them. I definitely would forget somebody if I'm naming everybody, but just friends and family at home. Um, they are my biggest fans for sure, and, and they're they're loving the game. So uh, um, I'm glad for that. Look at that. Oh, nice. We've all got our shirts for them. John, it's your first medal, and you made some clutch shots down the stretch. You lived up to the nickname Big Shot John, didn't you, when the team needed it? <laughs> Who that? Who that? Maybe we uh, just coined you I'm Big a, Shot yeah, John. There you go. Uh, I'll be glad to earn that nickname, so it's good. Big Shot John! <laughs> there you go, Devin, Colleen, thank you for having me. Nice to have you. That was nice memories when you look it, back does it still like make you go woo? uh it was just an incredible experience uh yeah just every time i think of it nothing but warm feelings and, um, yeah just uh it was a pleasure just the whole journey John, now listen oh sorry deb you go well, I was going to say it was such a special timing, and, and I remember Colleen and I, we were we were talking to your family and friends, and I think they were all sort of hiding, and then they moved the camera and everybody jumped up. It was such a great moment. Um, I, I wonder what it's been like over these last uh, number of months, um, just being able to talk about that experience and share that moment with everybody who's important to you in your life. Yeah, it's it's been incredible. Honestly, I didn't understand... Um, uh, firstly, to be able to share that experience with family and friends and, and get home and, and to listen to their stories, like mm -hmm. we felt like it was a marathon being there, but 
they were they were doing double duty too. They were going to work, but they were staying up all night to watch all our games, and so they felt like they needed some rest too when I got home. So uh, it was cool to share that experience, and um, honestly, so much support from uh, my local club too. Uh, it was amazing to, to people that hadn't watched wheelchair curling were just totally engaged and and uh, you know uh, just loving the game and. They stayed up, watched live too. So just it, it was amazing to hear everybody's story when we got back. That was one, of the, one of my favorite things. Nice. It is kind of amazing that both wheelchair curling and mixed doubles curling, it's just captured um, the viewer's imagination because they're still, for both of them, when it comes to television, fairly new. But listen, we're not here to talk to you about curling. We're talking about, we want to talk about your modeling career. <laughs> because you made it into the very famous curling calendar. So I can't wait to see the photo. I haven't seen it yet. Tell me we're going to see it. Are you wearing like a bathing suit or what's going on? <laughs> You'll have to get a calendar to find out, I think. Uh, it's, uh, it was an honor, though. Like I, I was honored uh, to be in the calendar to represent wheelchair curling. And uh, yeah, a really... Uh, really glad to do that it was and raise funds for obviously great cause youth curling um i was able to raise some funds uh for for my local clubs that have supported me uh so much and um yeah it's a, it's a really great uh fundraising initiative so was happy tell, to be part of it. tell us about that john um because i i as i understand it you get to pick your charity so tell us a little bit more about that yeah so um uh so my online sales will go towards um for the love of curling uh scholar curling canada youth scholarships um and then uh the in-person sales um which are gonna support two of my clubs so peterborough curling club is my main club and then bob cajun curling club is another club that i train at and super uh supportive of me so I chose those two clubs because they both supported me so much in my journey to become a Paralympian. Um, and I, I, it was amazing to be able to, to give back uh, to the clubs. Awesome. Give us an idea of the pose. At least give us an idea of the pose. Were you like, oh, you know. It's, uh, it's not on ice. Can I, I'll, I'll give you that one. Okay. Not All right. Ice. Okay. Okay. We're looking forward to seeing this because I know we were getting ready for the show and we were talking, where are the photos? We want to see the photos. Come on. He doesn't even have a copy himself to even hold up. Say that. Ah, uh, well, yeah. Oh, okay. I, I, I might be. Okay, have. let's see. Wait let's a second. A, a reveal on that curling show. I love this. All right, see, it's, a second. it's still on the wrapper, so we're gonna. Uh, oh, we're gonna get the knife, unpeel it. This yeah. So while that happens, and we'll get ready for that, um, John, you've done so much for the sport. You mentioned the two curling clubs that have done a lot for you. Um, how do we how do we grow this? We now have uh, wheelchair mixed doubles curling, a world championship. This is growing. Um, what do we? What more needs to happen in this sport to to get more Canadians involved, to get more Canadians watching, to get more curling clubs wheelchair accessible, so that uh, we can grow this sport? Yeah, I think it's continuing to build off, um, you know, the amazing exposure that we had um, at the Paralympics. Um, CBC did such an amazing job with, with CBC Gem. Uh, everybody was able to watch all of our games. We've never had that before. Um, we were all so thankful with, for all the coverage. So um, hopefully that continues. Obviously, we have we have our world championships this year. Are in Richmond, BC, where the where the where the host country, um, hoping to have um, some great coverage with that, um, and exposure of the sport. Um, you know, I, I think we're we're trying to build that sport to get to get more participants involved, uh, whether it's at recreational level or competition. So, continue, continuing to trying to get more people able to try it and and to fall in love with the sport like I am. Yeah. yeah. Well, certainly. COVID was a tough time, I know, because Canadians were cancelled and provincials were cancelled. I know for the wheelchair curlers in Nova Scotia, it was uh, really frustrating for them to be putting in the work and never being able to go to the Canadians. So yeah. hopefully that'll be back. Okay, do you have the calendar ready yet? Do we have a drum roll? I do. 
So let's let's say, let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. We've hyped it. I don't know if I hyped it. What, what, what month are you? I am Mr. September. Okay, Mr. <laughs> of course. Oh, wow. Yes, okay, yeah. that's crazy. I should have known about this because I know a lot about you. Tell us about this because you're really good at this. Yeah, well, uh, there, there's many that are, are much better than me, but I uh, I made some really good gains this year at that. So I, I started competitive uh, adaptive water skiing in, in 2018 and um, uh, slowly fallen in love with that sport too. But uh, it was nice that the pandemic had kind of uh, the last two years, the program hasn't ran, but uh, I made Team Canada in 2019, got to represent Canada in Norway. And then it was so nice to have the program back this year. Um, yeah, I got a lot of water time, a lot of training, and I made some some really good gains, made uh, second in fall in the Nationals this year, and third in trick. And wow, trick, trick. So it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, a sport I've fallen in love with too. So I got a summer wow. sport and a winter sport, and uh, I'm pretty happy. Okay, tell us your best trick. Uh, slalom, I have to say, is my is my funnest sport, or, or, or the, most, the sport I enjoy the most, uh, the event I enjoy the most. Um, trick, uh, it's mostly surface tricks. Uh, working on the the, the 360, 720, but. Um, it's, uh, it, it takes a lot of water time, so, uh, I'm, I'm still working at that, Colleen. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe, maybe some summer Devin and I can, before the, uh, Paralympics, we come for a summer and you teach Devin and I some tricks and see how much lake water Amazing. we drink. Yeah, we'll get you on All the right? We'll it's a deal. Uh, it's it. a deal. I, that's fascinating. I didn't even know there was such a thing as adaptive yeah. water skiing. Me either, and then, uh, but I have really enjoyed it. I'm uh, glad to hear I wasn't just fully stupid if you didn't know, and I didn't know. <laughs> he does it all. You're incredible, uh, John, and I'm always grateful when you make the time for us. It's always so good to talk to you. Um, can you tell us? Oh, Colleen was going to jump Yeah, in. he's not John. He's Mr. September. Mr. September. <laughs> Hello. Uh, can you can you tell us what the schedule looks like in terms of uh, leading up to the to the World Championships in Richmond, which we really hope we can be at, and we will be shining the light on that. But uh, can you tell us what this amazing? Yeah, so we um, we travel to Vancouver on Monday, so we have the Canadian Wheelchair Opens in Richmond, uh, BC. Um, so that'll be our, our first competition of the season. So we're we're excited to do that, and then we come to Toronto for the Ontario Wheelchair Open. Um, and then from, uh, from there, we have a, a mixed doubles competition in Edmonton. Nice. Um, yeah. So super excited for that. Um, kind of one of our first, uh, mixed double events and, uh, and then it'll be training ahead of, uh, ahead of the worlds, which will be, uh, March 4th to 11th, I believe in, uh, in Richmond. Were yeah. you guys at the, were you at the Richmond club before you went to Beijing? Am I remembering that correctly? Or was it Actually, a Richmond club? We were in, we were in Richmond. We, uh, we did our staging there. Um, the Richmond curling club was actually closed. So we actually did training at the Delta Thistle curling club, which were, were so supportive of us. Um, we had pretty much the club to ourselves to train and it was incredible. And then, we stayed in Richmond and and had the opportunity to train at the the Olympic Oval there too uh, off ice. So uh, it was a it's pretty great uh, play, place to stage. Um, so we're excited to go back there um, and, uh, and train ahead of this well. Awesome. Well, Mr. September, thank you for showing us that because that led to a fabulous story that was not curling related, which we always love when we digress. Yeah, that's great. And we'll be there on the lake with you soon. Very cool. Well, thank you, Devin and Colleen, for having me. I really appreciate it. It's great to be on the show. Anytime, always, Mr. September. Yeah, no kidding. Always a pleasure. Get your calendars. Uh, John, always wonderful to see you, and we'll be tracking the team throughout the season to the World Championship. Really appreciate it. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. And I love that the proceeds from that will go to the Love of Curling Scholarship to uh, Curling Canada. That's pretty awesome. No All kidding. right. Well, we had some gremlins and challenges tonight, but another we show. made it. We pulled made it, it off. 
Um, fly safe tomorrow. Get I to will. Toronto. Um, curling fans, you know Colleen and I will have you covered with a lot of content and coffee talks over the weekend. So stay tuned uh, for that on Twitter. Uh, and we're back next Thursday to set up the Leduc Mixed Level Super Series. Excellent. There. Watch it on Gem and cbcsports.ca. Um, See if Myers and Walker, the third time, will be a charm. They've been so close. They've played so great in these first two events and just came up a little short in both finals. But, you know, that was such a good final last weekend. They've been great finals. It's been great curling. Uh, you're going to stay and watch some stew cells action? I just might, but i got to go home and pack. i got to – it's already – it's getting too close to my bedtime already. I've got to – no, I'm going to stay for a while. That's a wrap. We got to go shopping for costumes and practice our do. tomorrow. Uh, as always, curling fans, you're the reason we do the show. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back a week from tonight, next Thursday, but you'll see us uh, out and about in Toronto on Twitter. Uh, All right. For tuning in. See you later. Thanks, producer. So. <laughs>